test, 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 test. But I'm sitting in the theater because this has a lot to do with my unhoped story. When I got pregnant with my first baby, my husband, being the responsible man that he is, decided, well, we need a house. And we probably want to move closer to family, which, brilliant idea, okay? My family lives 750 miles away, so that, was, that wasn't going to happen. So we found a house and we moved to this very small town about 100 miles from the city. Loneliness crept in pretty fast. And then when I would call home, I come from a very big family and they are very um, involved in each other's lives. I would call my family and they would be over at my aunt swimming, having a barbecue, or they were getting ready to go out to eat because they were all going to go to Samantha's dance recital. They're always doing things together. So then on top of loneliness, I had some resentment going on because, and because I don't hide things very well. Uh, my husband knew that I was not happy, which bless him. Um, I'm really sorry about that, Jason. <laughs> so it's very hard to, it was very hard to hide my discontent. But it's too late, kid. The house is bought. We've signed on the dotted line. I mean, I'm sorry. You're going to have to have to get over it. And here I am in this new place. And I don't like it. And I don't like it at all. This new baby, I am all by myself. And my husband is a touring musician. So um, I couldn't sleep at night. I just, you know, all new moms freak out. Just a mess. You're just a hot mess. You're, you're completely terrified. But I wasn't sleeping because I was either afraid that something was going to come into the house or that the baby was going to stop breathing. So I would shake her and wake her up. And it's just a, a lot to handle. I needed to pray. And I mean, pray all the time. And my prayer was, get me the hell out of here. So I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed for years. And we weren't going anywhere. We were staying put. And I remember one time when I was driving back from dropping my kids off at school and I said, please, please open up an opportunity for us, for Jason, for his career, for just get us out of here. And then I thought to myself, and don't you dare. I bet God loves it when we <laughs> talk to him like that. Um, I remember thinking, don't you dare make me like it here. Oops. <laughs> and that's what happened. My husband is a performer and he tours and sometimes he gets to do shows close to home. And he did get to perform a show at our local community theater. And after the show, this lady walked up to me and said, you know, you should bring your daughter to one of our kids acting classes okay, well, this is a good fit, so I just kept on taking her. Well, they had auditions for an all-kids show, and they were going to do Peter Pan Jr. So Lorelai auditioned, and my son, who was only, I think, three at the time. What was I thinking? Um, I was thinking I didn't have a babysitter to leave him with, so he's going to have to be in the show. I volunteered to work backstage just to keep the little kids quiet. It's only a 45-minute show, but it's the longest 45 minutes of a parent's life when you're backstage with your kids. So it just so happens that one Saturday, the music director could not make it for rehearsals. And the girl that was running the, the theater group knew that I had some kind of background and called me and asked me if I would just go over um, one of the songs in Peter Pan with the younger kids. I remember being in the car and thinking, you know, I know that my time on stage is over, which is kind of hard to swallow if I wanted to be really honest. Um, 
I've always loved performing. I've always performed for as long as I can remember. But I was telling God that I was thankful that we had found this for the kids, especially for Lorelai. And, you know, if there was any way he could give me something to do in the theater, that would be great. So a couple months later, I am at a show at another local community theater, and the gentleman that started the kids' program walks up to me and out of the blue asks me, would you like to direct the next kids' show? <laughs> Crazy. So I guess during these just, you know, short conversations that I had had with him or with the music director or with other parents, that I, so they had been watching me or something. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it was a complete surprise. And I went home that night, and I remembered I had been praying for five years to for God to get me out of here, and now I'm thinking, but not yet because I want to do this. And I cried that night. I cried because I wasn't praying to get out of there, but I was crying because I knew what an incredible blessing this was going to be on my life. And if I had, if God had answered that prayer of getting me out of here, what happened in the next five years of my life would have never happened, and it would have been a tragedy. I've been directing shows here for six years. It is the passion of my life. It's this unexpected, beautiful thing. And I think that's what an unhoped is. I'm glad we didn't leave. Um, I'm not glad I had to wait five years <laughs> being miserable. But nobody likes the wait. Um, nobody likes being patient. It's annoying. No loneliness anymore. I have met so many wonderful people here. I have such an incredible support system here. I have met people that I call family, that love me, that love my kids. I mean, not all your unhoped stories are going to have this spectacular conclusion. I hope that they do. Everybody has an unhoped story. This year, I might not, now that I'm kind of reflecting on my big unhoped story and where I am, maybe I'm, maybe a little bit of that anxiety of the new year's going away. Maybe. Maybe for five minutes. I wouldn't count on it. Maybe there's a lot of unhoped things that are going to happen to us this year stuff that's going to be like, uh -huh, and then stuff that might bring some beauty into our lives.